Using a flash for portrait photography is something that I've been doing for many, many years. I find it gives a beautiful, striking look to portraits and can really enhance the look of your photos if used appropriately. In this video, I'll go over a few flash techniques that I've used over the years to what kind of settings to use, to how to edit flash photos to look better, and give you my flash recommendations and also tell you my secret sauce to getting great looking flash photos that don't suck. Now, using a flash can be a great way to get moody nighttime portraits and can help with emulating an old point and shoot film camera aesthetic. But there are other ways you can use a flash to help with making your portrait photo stand out. So firstly, let's talk about what kind of flash you should use. And the truth is, almost any flash with some sort of manual control will do great. You don't need anything super fancy to take good flash photos. There are also a few different flash categories. So you've got the small flashes, which for my Fuji film, I love the EFX 20. It's tiny, powerful, and has heaps of manual control. Although unfortunately this was discontinued by Fuji and now commands exorbitant prices on the used market. So I would avoid it unless you can find a good deal on a used one. Now Godox have produced a flash called the Lux Junior, which appears to be a great option too, although I haven't had a chance to try it out myself. There is also this Lightpix Labs Flash, which has the benefit of having a wireless receiver and transmitter built in, and they are still readily available off Amazon, and it's a great little flash option if you can't find an EFX20. Next up, there are bigger Speedlight style flashes. So when I shot on Canon, I used a 600EX RT, and I found that flash to be great, well-made, and an excellent performer. But now with Fuji, I use the Godox V1F, and I absolutely love it. Its lithium battery means it has insane battery life, and the recycle times are amazing too. It's also really well-priced. You've also got like the Godox 8200 Pros, which are more um, like actual studio strobes that are in the shape of a... Um, in the shape of a speed light. I love these as well. I've got two of them too. And I find that you can actually create really, really incredible um, studio portraits with them, um, basically in any white room. Okay, so now, now that you've bought a flash, let's discuss what camera settings you should use in order to get the best results out of it. So when shooting with a flash, I like to keep the aperture at around f5.6 to f8. So this way you can get a lot in focus and it means that you can shoot quickly and not worry too much about missing focus. So this is especially crucial when shooting at night and when you want to get action shots, like for example, at the beach. That said, shooting at a lower aperture and also subsequently lowering the flash power can really enable you to get more of your background in the shot, which can look amazing if you're at a beach with a beautiful backdrop and you just want your subject to be well lit because perhaps the sun isn't quite facing in the right direction. See, using flash can be an amazing way to overcome shit lighting conditions and it can really smooth out people's blemishes. It's why I love using it. It really hides many imperfections and makes people just look great, saving you time when editing. And for me, honestly, the more time I can save in editing, the better. <laughs> so in terms of flash power, I find that less is usually more. If you set your flash to max power or one over one, it can be both extremely overwhelming for the subject and also cause your flash to take needlessly too long to recycle, meaning you are going through batteries and waiting for the flash to recycle far more than you need to be. For this reason, I typically keep the flash power at around 1 8 to 1 16th power, although if you're doing full body photos, crank it up to 1 over 2 or 1 over 4 and adjust your aperture and shutter speed to suit. So I typically keep my shutter speed around 1 1 25th of a second. Um, you don't need to go crazy high and you can honestly even go a little bit lower if you want to introduce a bit of motion or light trails in your images if you sort of move the camera as well while you take the photo. Um, this used to be really, really popular with club photos, but I think now this trend has sort of died out. Now, next up, a secret ingredient that you can use to really, really soften the appearance of your flash images is with the use of diffusion filters. So I personally love using the Tiffin Glimmer Glass 1 on my lenses, especially when shooting with flash, as I find the sparkle that it gives really adds a certain something to the images that you can't really add in post or not easily at least. And I do understand that you can technically make it a photo look similar to like what the diffusion filter does, but it is quite a lot of work and I personally don't see the point in doing that when I could just put the, the filter on and then the, the work's already done. So, you know, I like the Glimmer Glass 1 over something like the Pro Mist because I find that the Glimmer Glass still retains quite a lot of the contrast, whereas Pro Mist is almost like you've put like a spread of thin layer of Vaseline over the lens. So I personally think that the Glimmer Glass is like the best diffusion filter on the market. Um, I definitely prefer it over Pro Mist. Also, if you have a little pop-out diffuser on your flash, I would strongly recommend using it. So 
On the EFX20, it's just this little lever that adds a diffusion lens over the flash. And on the LifePix Labs flash, you have a set of diffusion gels that you can slide onto the front of the flash. So almost every single flash unit should have something like this. And it's really, really good to avoid getting super harsh light coming from the flash itself. If you're finding these tips useful, be sure to subscribe to see more great photography content. Something I used to be very, very well known for was my portraits against white walls with flash, giving you that classic supreme streetwear magazine look. And I find a lot of photographers trying to emulate this style and just failing because they simply think that putting the flash on top of the camera and firing gives you that look. But the easiest giveaway that someone doesn't quite understand how to do this style properly is to look at the harsh shadows caused by the location of the flash itself, as you can see in this example photo. But all right, how do I fix it? How do I make it look like this? Well, you need to bring the plane of the flash with the lens itself. See, this style is emulating the look of an old film point and shoot camera. And if you look at how an old film point and shoot camera is designed, the lens and the flash are typically on the same level as each other. Whereas with a big modern mirrorless or DSLR camera and lens, plus a big speed light, they are just on two different levels entirely. So what is the solution? Well, you get yourself a flash mount. So they aren't the easiest things to find, but I will link one down below that I think is really, really good. And basically what it does is it moves the flash closer to the lens itself. And with the use of a flash cable, or if you wanna go fancy wireless receivers, you can achieve this look of proper film point and shoot flash. And as you can see from those example photos, um, when you use the flash mount, you do get less of a sharp shadow, like less of a strong shadow. Um, it's not completely eliminated, but it's definitely a lot better than it is when you have the flash mounted on top of the camera. And I think that like I find personally that we're like with the X-T5, for example, um, if you use a sort of a smaller lens, you can actually get away with just using like an EFX 20 on top of the camera. You don't need this whole flash rig contraption. I found that this flash rig, sort of like the flash mount, worked a lot better when I was using my old Canon 5D. So that was quite a large camera. Um, and with a battery grip as well at the bottom, um, it kind of brought the flash even closer in line with the, with the lens itself. So uh, it just, you know, experiment, try out different methods and just see what works for you. Maybe you like the way that it looks with that harsh shadow. I know some people do actually kind of honestly sometimes prefer that. So it's just up to you, personal preference really. I really like it when there isn't such a sharp shadow around the person. Um, and that's kind of the signature look that I sort of developed. So um, yeah, if you want to achieve that look and you have a large camera, then you need to use that flash mount. Otherwise you'll get those harsh shadows and you don't have to use this actually just in front of a white wall either. Using the style of flash is great when outside too. Keep in mind, however, that this is also just for bigger cameras. So smaller point and shoot cameras like the Ricoh GR thankfully do not need to deal with this issue, which is exactly why I adore it and have used it for so many shoots. And also why I was very, very disappointed with the Ricoh GR3 removing that flash because I use a flash like all the time. I love using a flash. So not having it built in is really frustrating because it means I have to get an external flash now and then the flash is really big and then it's just, it, it, yeah, it just ruins the whole camera. Anyway, Rico, please put a flash into the GR4. I will love you forever. Anyway, when used on a white wall, it can give you the effect of looking like you're inside of a studio, despite being in a kitchen. <laughs> and the kitchen can actually be an amazing place to use multiple flashes to get results that look like this. Despite being here, a place which doesn't really look like a photo studio, but yet you can still achieve really, really cool results. Just, you know, off using just a couple different flashes. There's different techniques that you can do in order to get studio looking portraits in environments that don't look like studios. And if you guys are interested in me making a video on what I like to call kitchen portraits, you definitely be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make something like that in the future. So you could also use a flash during broad daylight as well, but this is something where a camera with a leaf shutter can come in very handy. Seeing as most cameras can only flash sync up to a certain shutter speed, usually 1 250th on modern cameras, you'll either need something capable of high speed sync or a camera with a leaf shutter or a variable ND filter basically to use a flash outdoors as you'll need to crank your shutter speed up to around 1 2000th of a second or higher to ensure you're still getting a well exposed image or you can use a variable ND filter. <laughs> But why would you use a flash in broad daylight? Well, like I mentioned earlier, a flash can really help even out unsavory lighting conditions and help with softening skin and making people look better. So don't discount using a flash during the day. It might just save your photos. Just to add on to the flash techniques that you can use, if you're shooting in harsh midday sun and you're having a little bit of trouble with getting well-exposed images, try shooting with the subject facing 
with the sun basically behind them. So like directly behind them. And then you illuminate the, like the front of them with the flash. You can actually really create some really, really cool results. And I love doing it. And I'll, I'll include a few examples here as well. So you can have a look, but this is gonna be a really, really good way that you can be able to shoot portraits in midday sun um, and use the flash to your advantage in daylight situations. Next, let's discuss editing flash photos. What to do to get them looking good. So firstly, I really like to bring down the highlights to ensure that I'm not blowing any detail out. Then upping the contrast, blacks and shadows is also crucial in making sure you get nice punchy flash photos. When editing flash photos, I do feel like less is often more. You really don't need to over edit the images too much. Although if you're shooting somewhere with beautiful colors and you'd like to emphasize them, try using the point color mixer um, feature in Lightroom. Um, it's really, really good. And I will typically select the skin and adjust the saturation and luminance of it as well. Um, I find this is a great way to make people look more tanned without drastically affecting the rest of the image. But if you're having trouble editing your flash photos, my new preset pack is a great way to get a head start in getting killer looking flash photos. So Nightlife 800 is literally designed for nighttime flash photography and Everyday 400 also looks great with a flash during the day. Link is in the description. Now, bouncing flash. What is it? Should you do it? And what are good tips on how to bounce flash better? So. Bouncing flash is an interesting topic and it's something which can drastically change the look of your image. So whether it's from using a speed light angled upwards or with a wireless flash facing away from you, you can bounce flash off of different surfaces to achieve a nice result, usually giving you a better, more evenly lit photo. And it's especially great for event or wedding photography as it gives a beautiful soft light if the flash is bounced off the ceiling. Now this is also where you need to exercise caution because if you're in a room with white walls and ceilings, well, the flash will bounce off beautifully. But if you're in a room with colored ceiling or walls, that flash bouncing is actually going to do you more harm than good by introducing the colors in the room into your image. So in this circumstance, firing the flash directly at the subject should help to try and alleviate those issues at the cost of providing a slightly harsher light. This is where an external diffuser comes in very, very handy, however. So, Flash diffusers can be a godsend and there are plenty on the market. So I've used the Gary Fong light sphere in the past and I was using the MagMod system when I shot with Canon. Although with the Godox V1, it actually comes with this um, handy little diffuser that magnetically attaches to the flash, which I like, although I still prefer the output that the MagMod produced, but it's a lot more cumbersome and quite a bit more expensive. And because the V1 is a round head flash, it won't actually fit on it. So you need to use a rectangular head flash. So. I just use this on my 8200 now um, if I just need a like a bit more of a stronger flash and I want a nice diffuser on it as well. So I know a lot of photographers who are scared of using flash in their photos. Some people often think that it can look a little bit amateur to fire the flash directly at the subject, but when used correctly, it can really create dynamic and powerful portraits and can also help save photos that might have been unusable due to crap lighting. Do you use flash in your photos? Let me know in the comments below if these tips were helpful to you. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.